G'day YouTube, Turbo Tristan here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna fit some white line sway bars and some power sprint lower control arms. And I'm gonna show you how to turn your rear end from looking like this to this. And I'm back down at Quick Bits in Dandenong. I need to pick up some fittings and I need to get an air temp sensor for the Haltech wiring. I, I'm not gonna use the one that came with the Honda. It's made out of plastic and no good for boost. So I've come down to see uh, Sticks and the boys down at Quick Bits and to pick up some extra fittings as well. So um, there's a couple of reasons I've been banging on about Quick Bits uh, in a lot of my videos lately. The main reason is he's a good bloke. He's a family owned business. He's one of the boys. He does this because he loves it and he's local. And another reason is you always support your mates. I just want to point out that I always pay for everything. None of this is sponsored, but the other reason why I'm always banging on about it is because uh, to show people that I do want to become a YouTuber, that I would be good if you do want to sponsor me. So make sure that you reach out if you do have anything that you want me to test or, or try out on my Honda, or if you need me to come and review anything or test any products but um, always support your mates, always support local. Okay, so I've grabbed the fittings that I need. I changed over that straight dash eight fitting to a 90. I got a weld on bung for the air intake pipe. So that's my uh, bung for the air temp sensor. You guys won't know this, but I actually stuffed up one of the connectors on the injector loom. So I got another plug for that. I, I learned from my mistakes and I'm gonna redo that one because I want it to look tidy. Everything was, the, the wiring job was perfect, but it didn't look nice. And I also picked up a Raceworks air temp sensor and plug. That's gonna go into the intake and the Haltech's gonna run that. Uh, if you do need any fittings uh, or any Raceworks products, jump onto QuickBits website and grab whatever you need. Sticks is actually out the back busy uh, organizing, putting in a new dyno. So things are getting nice and tidied up, extra dyno. Lots more happening down at Quick Bits, so stay tuned. Also in this video, uh, we've got a catch can. We'll talk more about that later. And we've fitted the air temperature sensor there in the boost pipe so that's going to be talking to the Haltech and making sure the fuel mixtures are right for the air temp and don't worry i am thinking about putting an air intake on there as well to get the cool air and not the hot air from the turbo manifold and if you stick around all the way to the end i'll give you an update on the wiring in the Haltech situation So while I've got the car up in the air and all the wheels and everything off and playing around the suspension, I'm going to lift the front of the car up about a centimetre. Uh, that's just going to help save my eBay front lip there and also make sure that we're not scrubbing under hard cornering, which will be pulling a lot more G-force in the corners now at Sandown with the sway bars fitted. So uh, yeah, we'll do that while we're at it and I'll show you what it looks like when it's back down on the ground. And uh, in the rear, sorry for the sunlight glare, but I'm going to drop that down the difference that we do the front. So probably take a centimetre down in the back and then um, a centimetre up in the front. As mentioned before, we're going to lift up the front of the car and we're going to lower the back of the car with the Max Peating Rods coilovers. So we're going to do some suspension tuning as well. These were the cheapest coilovers you could buy on eBay. These were $300 uh, delivered with the adjustable shocks. So they did really well at the track. They're nice and smooth to drive on on the street. Can't complain, they were cheaper than a set of uh, just lowered king springs. The OG subscribers are gonna remember when we struggled fitting the rear lower control arm bushes and I had to do it twice. I wish I just had to purchase the good ones from the start. But there they are, so we're gonna have white line bushes there, white line sway bars over there, rear lower control arms. 
and I'll do a comparison with the control arms in a moment. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna install the rear sway bar and the rear brace, the rear lower control arms, and also the front sway bar with some new bushes from White Line. Comes with the grease, comes with all the bolts, everything that you're possibly going to need. Uh, this will also tie in with my White Line rear lower control arm bushes that I've got in the car. So the back end of the car is going to be nice and tight, just the way we like it. I'm going to measure this rear sway bar now with my very nears. And that looks like it's a 22 mil rear sway bar. A decent upgrade from the no mil sway bar that we've got there. So that's going to be very interesting on the track to test that out. The front sway bar. Again with my very nears, that looks like it's a 27 mil front sway bar. So here we are at the front of the car, and that looks like we're rocking a 22 mil front sway bar. So we're going up five millimeters in the front, uh, and we're putting a sway bar on that's the same size as the front one on the back. So this is what we're working with at the moment. Factory rear lower control arms, no bracing here. I don't think that's gonna make much difference, but we have zero rear sway bar. So that's going to be an absolutely huge upgrade. So here we have the rear sway bar set up from White Line. I've gone and bolted it all together just loosely, um, just so I could figure out where everything goes and find a home for everything and how the sway bar connects. Um, but White Line is an Australian company. Um, they are renowned for being the best in the business at what they do. So there you go, another bonus. If you guys want some decals for your car or some stickers, hit up White Line, use this code, and you'll get them with your next purchase. They kind of give you that afterwards, so I wish I knew about this before I ordered my sway bars. I would have got the decal kit. Grip activated. Okay, so I've disassembled all of the rear now. I'm getting ready to start putting it all together and pulling the old stuff apart. So here it is all disassembled. Just wanted to point out a game changer, which everyone's been screaming at me to get one for a long time. So I went and got, in natural fashion, the cheapest one I could find, which seems to be quite good. I went down to Bunnings, which in America is like a Lowe's store, and I got myself a rattle gun or an impact gun. And that's going to make life so much easier. All the impact sockets and everything. So I'm going to start pulling that apart. Boom! Well, you look at that. Everything's gone. All right, now let's compare these side by side. Okay, so we've had a major fail somehow. Don't ask me how, like a long way. Look at that. That would have been an awesome upgrade. You can see the difference in thickness, the difference in the bushings. Yeah, I'm quite disappointed with that actually. Far out, it's ruined my Saturday. Okay, so after a small setback, I took a break, emailed the seller, sent them some photos. Hopefully I can get that sorted out within the next week or so. The car's not moving anyway, so not the end of the world. We're not gonna let a small setback get in the way of progress. So here we go, let's try and fit up this rear brace. Hopefully this fits. So, that looks like it goes there. And there's two holes existing. Okay, I can see where those pins go now. So that looks like it lines up. So let's start with these long ones and the pins. So it looks like the pin goes on the other side, that goes through, and then that goes through there. All right, so there we go, this is bolted on. Um, Worst case scenario, I can always use these control arms. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, they're just really thin and the bushes are old. So I thought I'd replace them. There's a little bit of a split there, but not the end of the world. Okay, so the next part of the install comes with these little things. 
they're like a little bracket and then this looks like one through and there we go like that washers locking nuts and there we go so do that on both sides tighten it down move on to the next part so these are a 13 which is a really odd size don't know why they didn't just put 14s on it but you live in your life All those ugga duggers. Zip. Zap. Done. Now over to the sway bar. Now it came with a packet of grease, but it also said these are greaseless bushing technology. They've got a special crisscross pattern on them. I don't know. I'm not going to grease them. Doesn't really need it. I put the split at the top, so when the weight's on it, it's not splitting at the bottom, it's holding it in there. Gonna bang a bolt in the top of each one, so it's pretty bloody heavy. So it turns out they're a 17 mil, so quite a big jump up in size there, but gotta be strong to hold the sway bar on. All right, so it's all installed. Uh, looks great, went in nice and simply. I have found one slight issue or two slight issues. The first one is the two and a half inch exhaust, which we all know is not a huge exhaust, but that's gonna touch there once I put the control arms in and every time I hit a corner, that's gonna bang on there. So my exhaust nice and tight, like it's almost touching here. Um, you know, I don't know what to do about that. I could probably get it and come closer over this way maybe and probably just modify that back section we'll see um, I've still got to adjust the suspension play around with that and then again the second issue right up close to the spare tire well uh, that's rubbing or it had rubbed on there I can't see the bar is going to be moving that much it's just going to be taking the sprung weight of the car and evening it out, but grip activated. Let's see how we go. Yeah, I'm not going to be defeated, so up to the front we go. Uh, the front one looks like it's a little bit more simple. We do probably have to drop the exhaust, but lucky I put those V-bands in there, which means there's only one bolt to undo. There is a 14 mil nut on the back of the sway bar attachment, and then there is... Um, two 12 mils down there to undo so that should be nice and simple i apologize for the glare can't do anything about that because we are working in a carport a new one a different one this time but still a carport just like the old place it's freezing here today in melbourne my ass is absolutely frozen to the concrete so hopefully nothing comes of that but the sun's out as you can see up there not a single cloud in the sky it's a beautiful day but we are at about 14 degrees. In America, that's like a minus a billion. It's really, really cold. God, I loves me this thing. I have to use a spanner to get to that one because it's an awkward spot. Well, that's already nice and sweet. So there's a little Allen key hole in the end of this bolt, which you need to put an Allen key in, otherwise it's not going to crack. Okay, so that's off, but well, it looks like we're probably going to have to disconnect the gear linkages, which is not the end of the world, and the exhaust, so it can slip around so the sway bar goes over the gear linkages and the exhaust so i'm going to undo that 
undo this bolt. Uh, try and undo that bolt. Can't see what it is. Might be an Allen key. And then uh, wiggle it around and get it out. Fun times ahead. <sighs> All right, so I had to stand up. I've been on my back under the car for 15, 20 minutes, but it's freezing down there. I've got the sway bar out, as you can see down here on the ground. Uh, side by side, they match up perfectly. I've put the bushes on already, and there's the D brackets that are gonna go on. I'll put those on last. Under the car was a struggle. I had to drop the exhaust. I had to drop the gear linkages, and then jimmy it through and in and around and under and over those while that was all sitting on my head. So that was fun. God, I'd love a hoist. That might be my next purchase or something to get this higher off the ground because those jack stands aren't doing jack. Here we go, wiggling it back through. This is not fun. sides on maybe hang it off those first that's an idea So nothing's ever as easy as you first think it is. It's meant to be two bolts each side and a nut on the sway bar link. Turned out I had to remove the gear linkages and the exhaust to loop it up and over, but we got there in the end. I'll show you what it looks like now. I'm really happy with it, it looks awesome. And under the car there, nice and thick, doesn't hit anything, both sides. And that's going to do a really, really good job of stiffening up the suspension travel and evening it out in the corners so that the car doesn't roll too much to one side or the other during G-forces and cornering. So I can still put these back on because I would like to upgrade these. They look better, they're thicker, they're actually lighter um, and the bushes are better. So I really want to get some of these installed. And then these are the link pins for the back, the sway bar links. And then they go through that hole and then onto the sway bar. All right, so that brings me to the next part of the video and it's oil catch can time. Now this one was made by Trick Fab down in Dandenong. Uh, now these guys uh, do tons and tons of custom work. Their shop's amazing. Um, I've got a lot of my welding done from there. Hopefully I buy a welder soon in the future and start doing my own stuff, but they made this box up for me. So there's two dash eight fittings in the top. That's for the rocker cover breather. Now inside here, there is an aluminium plate that's running down the inside. So all of the gas that comes in hits that, runs down to the bottom. The oil is caught down in the bottom of the catch can. And then all of the vapor can then come out. If you didn't have this plate here, the vapor would go straight in there and straight out the top of the filter. As a secondary precaution, um, I've also got a tube welded down inside there, which goes to about halfway. So that means only the pressurized air makes its way out through the top of the filter. That means you're not going to have oil spraying all through your engine bay under high boost, um, which is what we want. So this is a great design. Um, it was my design uh, with a couple of tweaks from TrickFab because they've done a million of these. And I also just asked for a generic straight piece of aluminium on the back. And then I put a twist in it. I used the stove to heat this up uh, and twist it. And the twist in there makes this a lot stronger. So it's not gonna flap and wobble around. And I've got a great spot to put this in the engine bay, which I'll show you in a second. Next, we have our Raceworks 
Oil breather lines, these are E85 safe, so they're not gonna deteriorate um, and send bits of rubber into the engine. There they are there with the Raceworks fittings. They're push lock fittings, so they're really simple to do, exactly as they say. You push them on until the end of the hose locks into this locking ring, and that's it, done, job's done. So we can fit those up, and we'll do that now. So most Honda Civic owners know that the battery goes right here. I've shifted that into the boot, and that'll be in a later video. But this is where the catch can is gonna live, right here in place of that. So that's gonna go right here. There's actually already a threaded hole, so I'm just gonna use that one. And mount that right there. Now, it doesn't hit anything, it doesn't rattle, because I bent that up and I decided I'd just paint the handle because there was a couple of scuff marks on it. This looks too nice to paint black. I may do that in the future, but I'm gonna leave it at the moment. Take both of the lines, Gonna run over and across like so. The other one with the 90 degree fitting, that's gonna run under there. Now you just measure these, cut them off with the Stanley knife and then push them on. Super easy to use, really effective. Uh, it's not braided, so it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. All right, so there they are. The oil lines are on. Breathing from the top of the rocket cover from the factory position. And a second one, which I've had put in, which was a baffle. And I've baffled inside the rocket cover. And that just goes there. Out of the road. Looks nice and neat. Now what you need to do with your nice new black anodized raceworks fitting is you just take a massive spanner and don't put it anywhere near there. This is just oil breathers. You don't need to tighten them up much past finger tight. You don't want to scratch up your nice new fittings and it's not pressurized with boost or oil pressure or fuel pressure so they don't need to be super crazy tight so the engine bay is almost complete i am tossing up what to do about an air intake there we've got our air temperature sensor the o2 wide band is fitted down here that's in i've run that along the power steering line and then into the car there so that's nice and out of the road. I'm really, really stoked with that catch can, and that was made from Trick Fab in Dandenong. There's their number, go check them out. One tip I do have for anyone at home building a car is if you're buying your parts online from say eBay or somewhere, click that you're watching them, put them in your watch list, and then if you just sit back, you're gonna get offered discounts by the sellers over and over and over. And if you don't need something right away and you don't impulse buy it on the spot and it's sitting in your watching list then they're going to offer you discounts most things the buy it now price if you sit on it for a week or two you usually get about 15 to 25 percent off on most items or they give you 50 dollar vouchers 10 dollar vouchers to try and encourage you to buy their stuff so that's my hot tip it's worked for me every single time even though there was the fail in those rear lower control arms they are way too short about two inches too short or five centimeters too short for what I need. It would actually tuck the wheels under the car if I use those, so I'm not going to. For now, I'm just gonna put the standard ones back in, button everything up and put the car back on the ground. I've raised the front suspension and I've lowered the rear suspension just a little bit. So hopefully that's gonna help getting in and out of my driveway and at the track. Okay, so that brings us to the end of another thrilling live action video. The air temp sensor is in. The catch can is in, the fittings are all done. I've raised the front of the car up, that's how it sits now. Springs haven't settled because I haven't driven it, so it's probably gonna drop down a pinch. The sway bar is on there. The back has been lowered even more. It's tucking tire nicely, love that. Here's the epic fail with my Power Spirit lower control arms. And there you can see I've stuck the factory ones back on. There's the white line sway bar all fitted. And I've lost my exhaust for now. I need to get that modified so it can work 
its way over all those bars. But once again, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Thank you so much to my brother from another mother who supported the channel by making a donation which paid again for the catch can and the temp sensor. I know you're going to change the world someday, so don't stop doing what you're doing. We all love you. Keep up the great work. Keep fighting the good fight. Thanks to SM Motorsport Wiring, Stuart McKinlay, Trick Fab, Darren Hellmouth for the welding. And thanks to Whiteline, Grip Activated. Really, really high quality product. Great packaging, sent uh, perfectly. Everything was immaculate. Uh, I do have one tip for you guys in the future, and that would be to provide some better instructions, label things, make sure that things are the right way up, where everything goes. You kind of have to work it out for yourself. It's not hard if you're, you know, half switched on, but if you're not, you're probably going to struggle. And thanks again for all of your support. Take your dirty, grubby fingers, give them a sanitize, click like, click subscribe, hit the bell, make sure you comment, share it with all your friends, anyone that's doing up a Honda, doing up any car, wants to have a play around the garage, share the channel. It's only upwards from here. Thanks for watching. See you later.